Hi, this is Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have the funnest project for you today. I love this panel. When we saw this panel by Quilting Treasures, Santa's List, we knew we had to have it. We decided to do something special with this panel rather than just putting some borders on it and making a panel quilt. We wanted to make it look like you were looking in the window at Santa checking his list. So we decided to do an attic window block, but sometimes when you do that, you have a Y seam in there because you're doing a miter corners. We decided to do it the easy way. So I'm here to show you the easy way to do an attic window block and make a window pane quilt out of the Santa's List panel. So first of all, I took my panel and I sprayed this with magic sizing and pressed it out so all the wrinkles were out of it. Next, I'm gonna square my panel up and cut it to specific dimensions because I want the math to be easy. So I have done the math for you. You are gonna find your download in the box below this video. If you click on the read more, you're gonna see all the links. You can click on the free download. That is gonna give you all your measurements for this panel and picture full color picture. If you have a color printer, you can print this out in full color. Shows you exactly how to cut this panel and get the math to work for you. It's simple math, all right? So to square up a panel is sometimes a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna do that with you today. So I'm going to fold my panel in half. I'm gonna open it up and I'm looking at my pattern and I can see that it's a little bit off and I'm just gonna slide this over so that my pattern is the same. And I'm gonna fold this up. I'm matching my edges. Slide this down a little bit here. I wanna make sure to get this as even as possible. This looks straight to me. There we go. Very good. All right, so what I'm worried about first is cutting my sides, all right? So I'm not worried about these two pieces being exactly on top of each other. I'm looking more at these ends right here. And you see how I have the pattern? I can see the pattern coming through. It's lined up here and it's lined up here. So I know that this panel is squared as it's gonna be, all right? Sometimes panels can be a bit off. All right, here we go. So now that I have it folded, I'm now gonna line this up on a line on my cutting mat, perfectly across, just like this, all right? I like the two and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler for this. It seems to work ver remarkably well. I like it because it's narrow and it's easy to maneuver when I'm trying to do something like this. The measurements I'm gonna cut this panel to are 30 inches, by 36 inches long. So I'm first of all gonna cut it to 30 inches. So I have found those measurements on my mat and I am just, I know right where I'm gonna cut this at 30 inches here to here and I'm just gonna center my design. And as long as we're still lined up on the line, I know everything is straight and even all the way up. All right, here we go. We're gonna cut this. Now you can see how down here, when I'm cutting into this, I'm starting and my, I see a little bit of that yellow line, but my ruler actually goes over the brown part on my panel. You're just gonna let that happen. You're not gonna worry about having to fussy cut this panel exactly like that. Because if you do, your panel is not gonna end up square. It's important that we square this panel up, all right? So let's make that cut. And now I'm gonna come over here and make the same cut, trimming this down to 30 inches. All right, there's 30 inches. Now I'm gonna cut this to 36 inches. So I'm gonna open my panel. I'm gonna fold it the other way. Now I'm gonna line up my cut edge this. There we go. Everybody looks happy here. Everybody's smoothed out. 
Everybody's smooth and even. This looks good. I'm just going to check this a little bit here, and I'm pretty close on this side. Let's check this side. This one's pretty close, too. I'd like to move this a tick if I could. Let's see if that's going to work. There we go. So I'm just kind of running my fingernails over the panel just to kind of shift it just slightly, just to get it where I want it. There we go. I like that much better. Okay. All right. So now, again, making sure my cut edges are still even. I'm going to set this on a line on my cutting mat. Here we go. All right. And I need to come away from my sewing machine a little. I'm going to come all the way to the end. All right, so now I'm going to cut this at 36 inches. All right. Okay, here we go. You're cutting it roughly in the same place. You're cutting off that yellow, that light yellow border. That looks good. And the top one. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm not going to touch this panel because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into rows. My rows are nine inches. All right, so now I'm going to cut this into four nine inch strips. Okay, here we go. go. So now I have four rows, each nine inches. All right. Now I'm going to open up my rows. Let's set these up here. I'm going to start with row four on the bottom. Okay. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take row three. It's important that you keep your rows together and you keep these in order or it's going to be kind of like a jigsaw puzzle to put back together if your rows get out of order. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep this really well organized. This is row two. And this is row one. All right. There we go. Now, I've got them all stacked perfectly on top of each other. And I'm going to line these up on a line on my mat again. Now I'm going to cut this at seven and a half inches. All right. All right, here we go. So I'm going to use this half inch mark on my ruler on the Creative Grids, two and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. It has one side, has a one inch mark. That's with the white numbers. This side has a half inch mark because I'm starting right on a line and I need to cut a half inch into the next one. That would be right here. Okay, so I'm going to use my half inch mark to guide me on my on my mat. All right. So here's one. And just set that carefully aside. So now I'm starting with my half inch, and I'm going to count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to turn my ruler around so I can use my one inch side on this side so that I'm lining up all my lines on my ruler with the lines on my mat. And I know that I'm not cutting off. I don't want to miscut right now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, my half inch again. So I flip my ruler so I can easily line up everything. All my lines on my ruler line up with my mat. There we go. All right, so I have four seven and a half inch blocks. Now, I'm going to label my blocks, label your rows, and I'm actually going to clip my rows together. All right, so our first one is row one, and I'm actually going to put a label on that, 
and I'm just going to go through and pick up all of row one. Kind of like cards, like a deck of cards. There we go. And I'm just going to clip them together so I know that's my row one. Okay, so I have all my rows are all together. They're all labeled, clipped, ready to go. Now I'm gonna show you how to fussy cut the gelato. We wanted to show how the light comes in through the window and you can see that on the quilt, how we have a lamp in the corner. I'll get out of the way so the camera can see that. And so we chose to do our lightest gelato right here where the light is gonna be shining on a window. And then as it grows out of the quilt, we've got it darker and darker. And to achieve that with one fabric, we used this ombre gelato. I'm gonna show you the ombre here. Let's get my blocks. I'm gonna have to move these out of the way. I don't wanna cut these again. I'll set these aside for later this off. All right, there we go. So you can see on the gelato ombre how in the center it's the very lightest and then on each side it just gets a little darker, 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 darker as you go. So I want to fussy cut this very center of this gelato because I want that brightest, lightest piece for a couple of my blocks. So these strips are cut at two and a half inches. So again, I'm going to use the two and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. And I'm just going to place this ruler right in the middle of my fabric, right where I want that cut to be. All right, here we go. I'm going to take the first cut, slide my ruler, and cut. Go. All right, so this is the first piece that I'm cutting. So I'm going to just set this piece out of the way. I don't need this piece. This is an extra piece of fabric for another project. I'm going to turn this around. And again, if this is too long for you to cut, because a lot of times you don't have this much space at home on a cutting mat, I would just take this and I would fold it in half and I'm matching my salvages right here. So you know that you're gonna be straight with the fabric. Let's make sure I made that cut straight and it's a little bit off. So I'm gonna straighten that edge a little bit. I'm gonna line this up on a line on my mat and I'm just gonna straighten this edge just a tiny bit. I don't wanna take a lot off of there. I'm just gonna take a tiny bit, like a quarter inch. There we go. Just going to straighten that edge a little bit. Okay, now I'm just going to take two and a half inch strips and I'm just going to cut all the way down to the darker part because I want light all the way to dark. Here we go. So now I have a really nice palette to play with. So the next step that I did when making this quilt is I took my blocks and I laid them out on a design wall. I, you could use your floor, you can use a design wall, whatever you've got, a bed, anything that you've got in your sewing room or in your living room, wherever you're working, lay out all your blocks and just note how that lamp light is shining down into that window. So we started with the brightest yellow and then kind of did a gradation all the way out. So what we can do is we can cut some of these pieces just to give us a good working palette of color. 
and then you just get to play with color. There is an actual photograph of our quilt, so if you don't, if you're not good at playing with color, you don't have to do that. You can just look at what we did and see where we placed our, see where I placed my colors at. All right, so I'm going to stack my strips like this because I'm going to cut them all at once. I'm going to square this edge up a little bit here. There we go. All right, let's double check a measurement before I cut all those strips. That's never a bad thing. These are going to be nine and a half inches. Oh, actually, I'm going to use my ruler to cut those. I think it's more accurate to use a ruler than to use your cutting mat. So I'm going to cut nine and a half inches. I'm going to start at this half inch side, and I can see up nine and a half. I'm going to lay this right along my strip. You can see my black number is nine and a half, and that's the one I'm paying attention to. Just like that. Next set. This ruler just makes it so quick and easy to cut pieces. Now, if you want extra pieces, you can open these up and press that fold out, and you can easily get another one out of these pieces here. Okay, you can get more if you want more light pieces. Okay, you also have another half year gelato that you could cut up. All right, so now you would just go ahead and lay these out on your floor and just start playing with your color and lay all your gelato strips out like we did here. Now let's talk about how to get that window pane effect in there. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to actually lay out a couple of blocks here. I'm going to start with row one. Actually do this here. These are so, such a beautiful panel. I just love it, digitally printed panels. They're just so vibrant in color. There's our little teddy bear. All right, so I know we have our darkest piece of it are in the top here, another one here, yep, we went a little brighter here, and you got to think about that lamp is shining up a little bit, a little brighter here, okay, and we have our dark brown. We're just going to lay our dark brown on the sides like this. There we go. All right. Perfect. Okay. So, I used a corner clipper to do this. So I'm just going to put this half square triangle on here like this so that we have this effect right here. And when you sew this together, it looks like a window pane and it looks like you've mitered this corner, but you haven't. So there's no Y seams. This is the easy way to do a miter. Okay? You don't do the miter. That's what makes it easy. So let's take piece of our gelato here. I'm going to take my corner, right sides together. I'm going to use a corner clipper. A corner clipper, I'm going to find my two and a half inch mark because that's how big this square is. When you lay this on here, you're going to turn it a couple of times. Ah, that's the way I want that miter to go. Visualize which way you want this to go. I want this miter to go this corner to this corner, so that when it's sewn, it looks like this, right? Visually check, I have my two and a half inches all lined up. That is correct, that's the right angle I want before you cut this. Cut that away. And then we take this to the sewing machine and stitch it. And I'm going to put a little pin in this right here.
just to hang on to that while we sew it. So I'm going to do a couple of these at the same time. You can do a whole row at once. Just watch your order. Um, if you've got your gelato pieces in order, you can also number those. I like these little stickers. Stay on their temporary stickers. They're not going to leave a residue on my fabric. They're just address labels. I love that. They're easy to find. They're common. I have them in my home. I have several sheets of them up in my sewing room. I use them all the time. There we go. Okay, so we'll do a couple of these and we'll go to the sewing machine. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to be using the confetti thread. I set this on top of my machine so I would remember to tell you what kind of thread that I'm actually using. So this is the confetti thread. This is the neutral piecing thread set. And whenever I'm piecing a quilt, I either use the white, the silver, or the black. And for this one, I will be using the white. Set those over here. All right, here we go. So I'm going to use a starter strip because I'm starting on this point right here. And I know sometimes on a machine, they tend to eat these points and this will just get taken right down into your feed dogs. But if I use a little starter strip and I sew off onto that first, usually my machine will behave itself and it'll sew right off of it. It'll sew right off and right onto that corner and not eat it. All right, so we have got these stitched. I'm going to give this a good press. I'm going to set my seam. And then I'm going to press, I'm going to open this up and press it toward the brown. I love how perfect this is on here. It's so even. I love that corner clipper for that reason. It just saves me so much time. Now, if you don't have a corner clipper, you're going to put your square on there. You're going to draw the line, sew on the line, trim it, and then press it. You just do it the other way. And we did give you full directions on how to do that in your download. OK. All right. So now we have these done. These go on here like this. So let's go ahead and put our brown onto these two, and then we'll make a couple blocks. We'll finish a block. Here we go. I'm just going to put a little pin in this. I'm going to pin this here. I'm going to pin it at the end so that this stays where I want it, so that when I'm sewing, when I start up here and sew to the end, this end stays together, but I've also moved my pen out of the way so that I don't have to stop and take this pin out. I can just sew right on past it, all right? So I'm going to do that on a couple of these. Again, you're going to want to keep these in order. Just work on a couple of blocks at a time. Okay, so row one. We'll do him first. Here we go. like that. All right, so again, I'm going to set my seam and I'm going to press this, finger press it open first and make sure it stays right where I want it. Make sure you're not taking a crease when you're pressing this open. Okay, that was block number two in row one. This is number one.
Beautiful. All right, now we're going to add the gelato onto here. I'm going to move my little sticker out of the way. Let's move him up here. I don't want to hit that with an iron. All right, here we go. So again, I am going to use a pin, and I'm going to pin right here where these seams are lining up. I'm going to pin this. Might stick another pin right in the end of this, like this. And again, we can do two at the same time. go and I'm going to go ahead and press this again as well towards the border that I just added. All right. Just like that. <laughs> I love that. It looks like I have mitered this, but I haven't and you can see that perfect. The point comes right where it's supposed to right there. Let's press the second one out. Nice. All right, we'll lay them back out just like that. You continue making your blocks and you're going to add your sashing, your sashing in between, your border, and then quilt it. Quilt it and put your binding on. And you have a wall hanging that is absolutely adorable. You will cherish this for years. I love this and can't wait to hang this in my home. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope you've learned something about making a fast window pane attic window block. And I will see you next time on Shabby Fabrics. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube so that you always know when we release a new video. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>